Hello everybody, hope you're all doing well. My name is Steven and this is the Storytime channel. We have some malicious compliance stories and our first story of the day is by God, I hate people. Okay, I'll use Italian dressing. I moved back in with my parents back in March and I've been showing my gratitude by cooking every night. I'm pretty good and often make tasty marinades for meat that involve a lot of ingredients. Every time, without fail, my dad jokes to just throw the meat in Italian dressing and not bother with the fancy marinades. The joke has gotten stale and annoying, but I love my dad so it's not a big deal. On Thanksgiving, my mother and I proposed to dad that we get the turkey dinner pre-made from the local deli counter since it will only be the three of us. Dad never helps cook on the holidays and an entire Thanksgiving meal is difficult to prepare with only two people. Besides, we get the deli meats and sides there regularly and they are delicious. Dad refused and made a big deal that we need to do Thanksgiving dinner proper. We laid out all the extra work and money it would take and ultimately compromised on some elements being home cooked and some pre-bought. A compromised element was buying raw turkey thighs to cook as our protein since those are Dad's favorite. You might see where this is going. It was my job to cook the turkey thighs since I'm good at meats and I made a marinade for them. I had all my sauces and spices set out and ready to go. Right then, mom and dad start arguing about how dad wanted homemade, diabetic-friendly cookies for dessert. It pissed me off since he'd made no mention of them earlier and I could have made them earlier and we already had plenty of sugar-free sweets. As dad walked by, he snidely remarked, don't forget the Italian, and something snapped inside of me. We did all this extra work because he insisted he wasn't helping, he wanted more, and now he was being sassy. Okay, Italian it is. I put all my seasonings away and dumped an entire bottle of cheap, low-fat Italian dressing on the thighs and threw it back in the fridge overnight. I cooked them as planned the next day, and they smelled and tasted like a salad. They weren't bad, but it was like eating turkey salad. Dad tried a bite and kept chewing, and eventually looked at me in accusation as I slowly stared at him. Did you? Yes, you said you wanted Italian. Hmm. And we kept eating our salad turkey dinner. Dad has yet to address the turkey or mention the possibility of an entire homemade Christmas dinner. We also had bought nice ham from the deli, so we had a fallback protein. So, do you think what OP did here was too petty considering how often the dad did make the joke about the Italian dressing and how incredibly frustrating he had been all throughout the process? Basically, was OP going ahead and essentially ruining the turkey by just marinating it in Italian dressing petty in the situation or deserved? Let me know in the comments down below. This next story is by Hey Pesky. Sorry, you revoked my overtime privileges yesterday. This was several years ago when I worked at a redacted big name coffee shop. My shift was 5 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. And often around 1 p.m., giant groups of kids on school field trips would come through the area. This was a coffee shop located in a major California city, very close to a bunch of museums. I had been working a lot of overtime because of it to help my coworkers through the rush. I got written up by my supervisor for doing too many overtime shifts without approval. I was explicitly informed to not work overtime again. I had lost overtime privileges until corporate deemed I could have them again, and working overtime again prior to that would result in further disciplinary action. The day after I was written up, right as my shift ended, three big buses full of kids unloaded and filled the shop. At 1.30 p.m. on the dot, my watch alarm went off and I went to go clock out. The store manager who wrote me up the day prior said, Wait, where are you going? I reminded her that I'd lost my overtime privileges, clocked out, retrieved the shift drink I'd made for myself right before the rush, and left. The next day, I was informed my overtime privileges had been reinstated. Easy to play hardball and take privileges away until you realize, hey, there's a reason they were working so many overtime shifts. It wasn't because, oh, OP just loved to work overtime at a redacted big name coffee shop. Maybe you actually needed them to work all that overtime. This next story is by Kaleidoscope16. You want to report me to the HOA? Be my guest. We were living in a condo complex on the second floor. 
and my downstairs neighbor was this older couple. The lady had a heart condition so she was always in and out of the hospital and I did my best to be respectful of her needs. I have four kids and unfortunately when you choose to live in the ground level unit, you have to deal with upstairs noise. I am pretty strict about how my kids play inside so if there ever was excessive noise, it didn't last long. Every now and then, Lady would text me asking if everything was okay and it was always just a tantrum. Back in August, my husband's maternal grandmother died and we were not informed, much less invited to the funeral. It's a whole thing. So to help his siblings through their grief, we offered to host a lunch for his sibling after they went to the gravesite and did a little meeting there. I wanted to clean my porch off because, hello, four kids are super messy. I texted my neighbor and very politely but firmly said, hey, we're going to be cleaning our porch, so if there's anything you don't want getting wet, move it out of the way. Well, she didn't like that at all, threw a huge fit, and had her husband come up and try to bully us. Her grandkids had drawn in chalk on her patio and we were just going to wash it all away, how horrible of us. Her husband ends up saying, we'll just report it to the HOA and deal with it that way. I was so irritated. We ended up not cleaning the porch due to some other circumstances, but they had already sent in their complaint. Next week rolls by and I get a letter in the mail from the HOA basically saying, you have to keep your porch clean or we will fine you. In comes malicious compliance. I text my neighbor and let her know that we got the letter and I would be cleaning the porch that day so she needed to get all her stuff moved. She was all huffy. Oh no, you can't do that today, I can't move anything. I'll talk to my husband. A while later she texts and says, he's coming home early to move everything. He's not happy. Gee, I wish we could have done this on a Saturday like I had planned last week. Sucks to suck, lady. It felt so glorious spraying off my porch knowing she was downstairs complaining about it because I could hear her phone conversation. Now, I could be ignorant, but is it normal to clean an upstairs patio by spraying it off with a hose? It just seems like fundamentally something that would be incredibly annoying for a downstairs neighbor, especially if it was more than just a second floor. But honestly, I've never dealt with apartment living, so I wouldn't know if that's normal or not. This next story is by Potassium AU. Forced me to drink milk? You're going to regret that. Growing up, I had a severe dairy allergy. It has gotten to the point now that I am an adult that I will just get a stomach ache. But at the time, I would projectile vomit with ingesting just a little dairy. This proved problematic growing up in the 90s as the schools wouldn't release dietary information to my parents in order for us to make informed decisions on if I could have a school lunch or bring my own. I went home sick a lot as a result. So since it's the 90s and the whole Got Milk campaign is going strong, there was an implemented milk break that all the kids would go into the hall, get a snack and a small milk that had to be finished in 15 minutes or so. My parents, being the geniuses they are, had provided my teacher with juice boxes so I could still partake in the break and have my snack. Until the fateful day I had a substitute teacher. Dun dun dun. When it got to my turn in line, I was offered white or chocolate milk. Best day ever, right? There's chocolate milk. No. I politely told her that I couldn't have the milk and asked for a juice box. The teacher, thinking I was just being difficult, said no, I needed to have the milk. I declined again, only for her to pick for me and tell me that I had to sit by her and drink it, so she could make sure I did. I ate my snack and didn't drink the milk until it was time to go back into the classroom. She then told me that I would have to drink it or I wasn't allowed back in. Basically on the edge of tears because I knew I was going to be in trouble, I downed the milk and headed back into class. About 15 minutes into our lesson, my stomach starts feeling funny, obviously, and by 20 minutes, I'm starting to get really hot because my little body is about to erupt a storm of milk dotted with the sludge of chewed up graham crackers. Then it happens. Mount St. Helens blows and my desk becomes blast zone. When the retching completes and the entire contents of my stomach are in full display to the class, I was sent to the nurse's office to lay down and wait for my saint of a grandmother to pick me up. She comes in like a bat out of heck, let me tell you, ready to go full-on Hulk Hogan on this teacher after I told her what happened. 
When she got to the classroom to collect my jacket and backpack, she runs into the teacher being told off by the head janitor. They all knew me and my mess is pretty good by this point, saying if she ever made this child drink milk again, she would be the one cleaning it up herself. So I got to spend the rest of the day at home puking my guts out and watching cartoons, and I never saw that substitute teacher again. Or, on her end, she never had to see me again. Happy endings for all. Grandma's showing up to lay the smack down, brother. How dare you force my grandson to drink milk, brother. Beware of grandma's 24-inch pythons, brother. And our final story of the day is by Miss Mally26. They wanted the safe combo. When I was in the military years ago, my shop slash unit was a skeleton staff, which meant I, as a lower ranking enlisted person, was given tasks way above my pay grade, one of which was safeguarding the old safe in the unit. I had a high clearance, but had to be read in at a higher clearance to access the safe I was in charge of. This plays a huge part later in the story. I spent a couple months organizing and clearing out the safe, and during that time, the only person who could read the access clearance to the safe had retired, so I was the only person in my unit with the safe code. This unit treated me horribly. I was in tears almost every day as a lower rank with new higher ranking personnel coming into the shop and treating me like crap because I was lower ranking. Though for a year, I had been acting as a higher ranking position to manage the shop. Finally, I got transferred to a different unit and out of that shop. The shop I transferred into wasn't classified, whereas the shop I was previously in required top secret clearance. About a month after I started my new position, two higher ranking personnel came to see me in my new office. They were a part of the shop where I was treated like crap, when we were assigned new members and were included in those treating me like crap after I had been running the shop for months. They wanted the safe code, which, legally, I wasn't allowed to give them. Since we were in an unsecured location and they hadn't been read in to get the clearance to access the code, I refused to give them the safe code and refused to go into the secure building to even be able to discuss the code because I was busy in my current position. In fact, I was the only person in my unit of 400 plus people to know the code. And since I was only given access to the code, but not given permission to securely read people into the clearance needed to know the code, I refused to give them the code, per the laws regarding classified materials. In the end, they had to pay for a special classified locksmith to fly down to break into the safe and reset the code. The best part was, there was no information they needed in the safe. It was all old materials that we no longer used, but weren't relevant to the current mission. I thought it was beautiful payback for how they treated me after I managed the shop with my lazy bosses who outranked me. Apparently, in the comments on this Reddit post, some people clarified that according to the regulations, aka the law, they needed to change the combination after OP left the shop. So I guess technically OP should have just told them that they no longer knew the combination since technically it shouldn't have been the same one after they were gone. I personally kind of hope that these people felt awkward as heck having to show up and basically admit, hey, uh, I know we treated you like crap, but uh, you have the one thing that we really need and we would really like it back from you. I feel like if I was in that situation, even if I knew that I could give them the code, I would probably want to spite them just for how they treated me and be like, oh no, uh, I don't know the code anymore, and even maybe make something up on the spot where you did have to change it after you left and that you don't remember it, or that you deleted any record you have of it, or that you just don't remember it anymore, something like that. 
But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. So which of these stories was your favorite and why? Let me know in the comments down below. But besides that, if you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing and turn notifications on if you haven't so you'll never miss an upcoming video. Any little thing that you do helps the channel grow so much more. Whether it's commenting, subscribing, or just watching the video, thank you all so very much for supporting me right here on the Storytime channel. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you all next time, right here on the Storytime channel.